All right, all right. We got the power of Regulus from Echidna. Season 3, Episode 3 of Reaction Analysis. I'm sure it's going to be another 10 out of 10 episode. This new episode of ReZero Season 3 was way too short, man. That felt like five minutes. It was awesome seeing Subaru actually fight for once, using mm -hmm. a whip combo with Shamok, EMM, and the Unseen Hand. But un And nothing happened. Literally nothing <laughs> happened, bro. He, if, I, I think the point of Subaru's attack here wasn't to damage Regulus, but for us to see his new repertoire of skill sets, I'm kind of bit confused about emm but it sounds like it's a move where you're like half a beat faster like you're literally kind of like ahead of the other person and how they perceive you so that's really cool the whip we've already seen from the training stuff an invisible providence it's basically just a weaker unseen hand right Unfortunately, his opponent had to be Regulus of all people. Garfield's yep. plotline is getting so good that sometimes it feels like he's the main character. I even enjoy he is. his trauma. Dude, he is straight up the main character of a battle shonen right now. And these moments were really, really good. I'm just worried for Mimi because there's just been so many cute slice of life moments with, you know, Mimi. And you know what happens when there's slice of life? A life's about to get sliced! Because it means we get to keep seeing Elsa. And we'll never True. see her again. <laughs> I'm so glad Elsa's if back. I was the Archbishop of Gluttony. Felix's ass would be the first thing I. Capella. We gonna eat like Felix's ass, and no, it's not gonna be if I was the Archbishop of Gluttony, right? It's we. There was an intentional wording of Lai Bite and Kaitos about Archbishop, we, us, plural. I think there's multiple dudes. I don't know how exactly. I don't know if multiple people can occupy the same seat of an archbishop. Is it a... Maybe it's not two people. Maybe it's like a... <laughs> he just bipolar as fuck and the personality switch changes. Dr. Jekyll and Hyde? I don't know, but there was something very weird about the wording. It's the archbishop of gluttony. Felix's ass would be the first thing I... Eat. Capella, the archbishop of lust, is finally here, and she wants to step on you, but don't let... Yeah, she said, like, shit your pants and cry because I'm here. Anytime an archbishop shows up, I'd love to understand what they're about by understanding the dialogues because the dialogues are very intentional. When Betrigis is yapping, Sirius is yapping, it's not random madness. Sometimes it may seem like that, but there's more to it than meets the eye. And you can understand how their sins kind of like associates with their character. Get on your knees, grovel, and soil yourselves and cry out like a sad little wretched before me. Sounds like she's a dominatrix, right? It sounds like uh, Capella is a dominatrix associated with the sin of lust wants to step on you but don't let that distract you from the fact that the voice actor for Sirius drops one of the best vocal performances you've ever heard every single episode and she's yeah, popping off i can fix her episode three begin i don't think we can fix her Sirius is assuming that fortuna is serious it's actually i'm kind of thankful that like Fortuna is back as serious as we see different sides of her. Completely different sides of her. Of her like, I was even inhaling Senpai's exhales. I was like, Senpai and I, we made eye contact for like 10 couple times. He must be in love with me. So like, we're getting to see these, all these unhinged. It's like, it's almost like a deranged like Yandere for like a rom-com, right? It, it's, so I do appreciate how we're seeing a different side of quote-unquote Fortuna through Sirius. I can fix her. Episode 3 begins with Lai Batten Kaidos arriving at the city. And in a way, he's even scarier than Regulus because at least Regulus is willing to have a conversation with mm -hmm. him. Batten Kaidos just gets horny and starts killing people for yep. no reason. And he's ugly as shit. He's Oh, come on! Made an abyss looking ass character, bro. I always thought that this kid just he just came straight out of Made in Abyss. Like it, the the character model just does not fit any other like models that we've seen in Re Zero. He's shit, he's by far the ugliest Archbishop. He looks like something that just. Oh, that's very meta. Oh, my glorious bald king has fallen so much. I go home, visit my family for Thanksgivings in Canada, and holy shit, he's banned, and now he's making an apology. OTK, Starforce, every other company has let him go. It is what it is. Crawled out of Asmongold's room. And what is he wearing? Yeah, I'm telling you.
that's what I'm saying, bro. This is, you, you think like girls are aggressive with their cleavages? Dude, this is basically a cockball cleavage. Like, what the hell is this outfit? What the fuck is this? Guys, if you're gonna- It's the deepest V-neck I've ever seen in my life. What is this? Guys, if you're Freaky gonna- Freaky ass kid. People, at least put on some drip first so you look good while you do it. Let me explain what I love about Regulus. What? He acts like he follows a reasonable code of ethics, yet all of his rants and monologues contradict each Unreasonable. other. Unreasonable. He's essentially just twisting logic to justify doing whatever he wants. Yes, he has an end goal. And the end goal is, how do I manipulate this argument so that I can end with your violating my human rights? I love listening to the arguments he manufactures in defense of his actions, and every scene with him is full of tension and suspense because you just know he could snap at any moment. The but at the same time, he is the most reasonable <laughs> archbishop that we've met so far, right? What other archbishop is actually down to talk and like say, I don't actually want to fight. I don't want to do this shit. I'm just here to yap and the moment that you piss me off, I'm going to kill you. Slightest thing might trigger him and the way he attacks people is so casual and nonchalant. It's Regulus so cool. is just a very meticulously well-written character and I thought this was the best scene of the episode. It was really cool. It also, they're giving us more and more of how Regulus's authority works. It's really just looking like fucking <laughs> vector transform it's so meta because like we're literally just watching a certain scientific magical index right total index and we just met accelerator episode 10 and 11 and vector transform it literally just looks like it he, he, he and regulus needs to like he he has to be aware he doesn't have like an automatic like mugen like gojo or accelerator i guess because we've seen when Regulus can be contacted if he's not aware or something, or he can't react in time. But everything, it just looks more and more like Victor Transform with a little bit more limitations. I thought this was the best scene of the episode. It's funny because Regulus wasn't trying to kill him, yet Subaru would have died here from blood loss if it wasn't for Beatrice. Let's go, the Betty. The key visual for this season had an interesting reflection. Oh, the leg. Ah. Uh, oh, also. There's another light novel cover. There's a light novel cover picture, I remember, for this arc. And it had Subaru walking with like a band across his leg. And I guess this is exactly what that's from the injury and the water, you know, reflects that. ...of Subaru's leg in the water, which might imply that Subaru ends up losing it and he has to use the unseen leg to be able to... What? I thought that this might be fake spoilers. Like, 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 in the cover art is like doing fake spoilers where... You know, it's like, whoa, what's going on with Subaru's leg? It's got, like, dark properties coming out. But actually, it just alludes to the injury that Regulus will give him. And it's pretty much been reattached and healed up by Felix, right? But maybe we actually do lose a leg? <laughs> Unseen leg? Unseen dick. Unseen everything. It, does it retain a hand-like shape? It does, right? Because, like, if we're going to think about unseen him by using an unseen arm, like, it's not going to be a foot. It's going to be, like, a hand. It's going to be weird. Walk. No. Just imagine how stupid. And he has to use the unseen leg to be yeah. able to walk. No. Just imagine how stupid that would look to other people. If you pay attention, you'll notice that it's actually the wrong leg. This is his right leg. Fake spoilers. Fake spoilers. Leg, and this is the left. Could that just be a mistake on the production side of things? No, intentional. No, because ReZero is perfect and nothing happens on accident. Capella. ReZero is perfect and nothing happens by accident might be the biggest propaganda and the biggest, like, um, scientific, like, social experiment that Nagatsuki Tape has conducted. He made the story with such subtleties and assumptions and implications and even the Q&As are such lies that the fandom glazes the show to the degree that there is no mistakes. Everything is intentional and you're just too stupid if you don't understand. <laughs> no, I think this is a clever way to do... Like, you know how Garfield's fighting fucking a dragon in the opening? The opening visuals, it trolls you because it's a cool way of showing you hype visuals without spoiling the actual canon events of the story. And maybe this also is just another example of that. This is his right leg and this is the left. Could that just be a mistake on the production side of things? No, because ReZero is perfect and nothing happens on accident. Capella has been revealed. I've waited so long to finally talk about this character. And Lugunica Capella, eye color, hair color, fang. She is a, what the hell is this? 
Rem if reads your sloth if story. Oh, Capella shows up in the if story. I hear that the sloth if story, while it may sound happy in the beginning because your family would, you know, Rem and you went to Karadagi, I hear the ending is like the most tragic. Too long to finally talk about. And maybe Capella is the reason for that. About this character, and yeah, she is the Archbishop of Lust, and she's voiced by Aoi Yuki. Oh shit! Tanya, that's why a lot of people are saying Tanya, Tanya, Tanya. Um, I'm- Oh, Komachi? What the hell? Yo, Komachi from Snafu. I know Kumoku, right? This is one of my favorite isekais as well. Spider Summer, Spider So What. Yuki from SAO, Mother's Rosaria, right? She also voiced um, a lot of FGO characters. Okita, Shiten Doji. Lumine even for Genshin Impact and she is this is a fucking like top shelf talent man these characters are not random side supporting characters these are like extremely important characters in their respective anime like she is like yeah she's the goat like she, she, she's like like tier one like voice actor and she's voiced by Aoi Yuki massive W there's already a ton of information we can unpack just from her name alone Lugunika royal family look at the traits but first things first smash obviously I'm just I don't find body types like this to be attractive it just doesn't do it for me like I need them Big titty fucking witch milfs. Like, segment. Like, like it, bro, what, there's, this, there's barely scraps here. It's... I, hang on, hang on, everyone has a different type, I guess. What is her design? There's, like, these butterfly-looking things. It's, I don't know. And she's got these extra, like, balls right behind her ass. But I'm sure this is where, like, the twin lions comes from, right? In the trailer of the opening, you see her attacking with these, like, big lion faces that just shows up out of nowhere. Doesn't she also have wings? I don't know. Capella is, as usual, the name of a star. The goat star. Constellation. Apparently. And her last name is Lagunica. The goat. As in yeah. the royal family of Lagunica. Yeah. That was supposed to be wiped out by a disease. Roswell yeah. explained this when season one, episode four came out. Back and I think the, the plague, bro, I think that there is a conspiracy here. Because Felt is obviously the girl that got kidnapped 15 years ago, the lost Lugunican princess. Some people are saying maybe it could have been Capella. I don't really think so. Capella, maybe she's like a forbidden love child, right? Maybe one of the royal families um, uh, made love with someone else and, you know, there's like a secret child that was never, you know, brought into the royal family. That could be one theory. And the, of course, de facto theory we always rely on is <laughs> Pandora. Pandora faked us all. I don't fucking know. Back in 1975, her hair color is consistent with the rest of the royal family. Yes, remember, blonde, red, and fang. Fang is also a very important trait. Felt has it. This is the um, friend. If you guys don't know, that guy is like the childhood friend of Krush Karsten back a long time ago. And before Subaru arrived, he like died a couple months back. Exactly when the royal family got like, quote unquote, wiped out, right? And maybe he is the main reason for like, why Krush wants to get rid of the covenant with the dragon. I feel like somehow, some way, the dragon might be definitely involved in this because a covenant is associated with blood ties, like the royal family, the dragon. It's the dragon's duty to make sure that Lugunica is prosperous and she'll be there always, even if he's beyond the Great Waterfall right now. But if we think of it in terms of he cares more about the control he has over Lugunica rather than the royal family itself, maybe the dragon wiped him out because, you know, covenant, you know, blood ties. I don't really know. Capella's eyes, though, it's more pink than red. And another example here is Priscilla. I didn't even realize until recently. Priscilla's hair is not that blonde. It's more orangish. It really is. But she also doesn't have a fang. Her eye, though, and her hair color, it's very, very similar to Lugunican royalty uh, traits. Maybe there's, like, some diluted Lugunican royalty blood in Priscilla. Who knows? family but her eye color isn't quite as red so who knows we can speculate about her ability now that that oh it looks like Reinhardt's gonna be fighting yeah this attack right like twin line shows up it's like it's coming from her like the gourd on the back of her ass we can speculate yeah yeah see about her ability now too because we know that Carmilla the witch of lust was able to charm everyone she met sometimes even infatuating them to the point that their breathing and heartbeat would stop Obviously, yep. authorities will change from person to person. Depending yeah, but authorities will always change from person to person, minus Sloth for whatever reason, because Sloth is just too fucking lazy to change. But what did Carmilla do? There's a one line when Echidna was like, you know, giving a little brief summary of the different witches, and Carmilla was like the one responsible for 
mating with animals. You know the re recent Pokemon uh, <laughs> leaks? The Typhlosion leaks? Carmilla allowed it all to happen, right? She allowed Beastmen, uh, different species to... <laughs> they, they're all fucking, right? Demi-humans, right? Uh, how, did this, how does this associate then the, the witch factor of lust with a, a Capella? I don't know, but she's using beast attacks, right? She, there's like different animals and shit attacking, so there's a the carry-on theme with that. I don't fucking know, I'm reaching here. Depending on their personality, but personally, I'm feeling pretty charmed right now, so... I yeah, she is super down bad. She, uh, She's not super down bad. A lot of people are super down bad for her, and a lot of people... Sorry, not a lot of people. The Her dialogue, when she said it, right, the radio broadcast, remember, listen to what they're always saying. It's not just random madness. Sounds like a fucking dominatrix. I don't know. Maybe this is just a side effect of listening to Aoyuki's voice. By the way, can I have 300k Ooh, subscribers, please? Damn! Hopefully you can tell. He got it. It's actually 300k. I know that YouTube, you know, it's cut out right now, but he got 300k. But I put a lot of Congrats. effort into my videos, so it would be an awesome reward if you guys got me to 300. That's big. Two big 300k on season three of ReZero. That's pretty uh, poetic, huh? 99 is just so close, I had to say it. Anyway, I almost felt bad for Sirius here because fighting against Regulus is just unfair. Subaru really saw this guy walk through a pillar of flames completely unscathed and thought to himself, maybe his weakness is being whipped, obviously. You never know, I mean it landed, probably because Regulus didn't give a fuck about Subaru and sense no danger. And Subaru's whip attack did absolutely nothing, but imagine how funny it would be if it actually worked and Regulus just vaporized instantly. Yeah, I, I mean, I was trying to theorize of like, maybe this whip, we're all like, underestimating it. What if this is the true counter to Regulus' authority somehow, some way? I don't think so. <laughs> Vaporized instantly. Subaru does do something cool though. He uses EMM, a mm. new spell he created with Beatrice. It stands for Amelia's Mommy Milkers and it's an. No, it, what does the EMM even stand for? I don't know. Absolute damage nullification barrier that protects you from any one attack. Probably. Really? Whoa, 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 go back, go back. Absolute damage nullification created with Beatrice. It stands for Amelia's Mommy Milkers, and it's an absolute damage nullification barrier that protects you from any one attack. Probably one of the most powerful spells available to- How long does it happen for? Just one attack. You have basically invincibility for one single attack. Now, if it was like some sort of seal, I wonder what would happen. Would that seal be cancelled out with EMM? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of ways to get around this power right now, but any attack, get out of free jail card. Damn. Subaru. At least it's a lot more useful than his authority of sloth, which we- Authority of sloth is actually so fucking useless. For right now. Because like, not only is it just one single hand that shows up that's barely able to scratch Regulus's cheek, but the aftermath, because of the quote-unquote incompatibility, yes, he is more, compatib more compatible with the witch factor of sloth, right? Compared to Betteregus, that's why he just fucking- His eyes are always fucking bleeding on, he's going crazy whenever he uses his powers, but like- the drawback, right? Is, is it worth to use this authority for this one single wrong, long range punch then you get like, you feel sick in the stomach? I'm not so sure. We finally got to see him use again. I don't know why, but I fucking love this ability. I get so hyped whenever he uses it and it's not even good. Honestly, it kind of sucks. I mean, it sucks a lot, but it's just cool when Subaru uses it for the first time because it's like, oh shit. He can use an authority? What the- Well, we are- Back then, we didn't know that Return by Death was also literally an authority given to us by, like, Witch of Envy. Or not if we're just, like, you know, using it by proxy through her. But it's cool to see that Super is, like, getting new powers and he's doing shit. But Nagatsuki Tape, the author, has a- He does a really good job nerfing Subaru. He does a really great job in giving Subaru these powerful allies and these powerful tools, but- there's a lot of limitations and restraints, even vehicle, right? You would think that any of this shit would be so easy. Just fucking Al Shamak, right? Minya. Turns out, that only was ha that's a one-time thing because Biko stockpiled so much mana for 400 years in the library. We can't do that anymore. And right now, what happened? Biko heals Subaru so much that Biko is literally in this suspended animation stance where she doesn't have enough mana to even operate, right? She's out of a fucking battery. Thank you, FPQC, for that prime, man. I appreciate that. Also, it's Amelia Maji Megami, Amelia Major Goddess, EMM. What the fuck does that even mean for the invincibility? Amelia Major, EMM, Major, I, I, it makes sense to his mind. But like, again, 
it's just such a well balanced character where new power is it's like he he can't just abuse this shit he's very limited good honestly it kind of sucks i mean it seems like it does more damage to subaru than anyone else <laughs> yes but something about it is just really cool to me it really makes the battle goose fight in season one feel a lot more rewarding i just wish it didn't take 37 episodes for subaru to remember he has it not wah, wah. um this scene remember the box that flugel gave betrugis here this box symbol is the same as what uh sirius is wearing on her pin the middle chest I, I don't think it really matters too much i'm always thinking like what is this symbol associated with this is the cult symbol probably wish it didn't take 37 episodes for subaru to remember he has it not only do we have to worry about being attacked by the arc right here right over here this is what i'm talking about the two cross swords with the red in the middle I don't know if it's associated with the cult specifically, but the box in this is the same. Bishops, but they're even trying to fuck us now too. Regulus kidnapped Amelia with plans to marry her, and now Sirius is trying to hook up with Subaru as well. Yeah. Not that I can blame her. He I don't know if Sirius is trying to hook up with Subaru though. Because, yes, Sirius says I finally found you, right? Because bet to the goose. The witch factor of Sloth is in Subaru right now, and Sirius thinks that there's some sort of connection there. Does she want him romantically? Or does she want to, like, basically, like, keep him hostage? I think that Sirius is gonna keep us in a fucking dungeon, bro. Straight up. Like, in, like, at the bottom of a well. Put some lotion down there. Rub that lotion across your butt. You remember it's Buffalo Bill or something? I, it's, it's some random horror film for American shit. But, like, I think that she wants to keep us in a sex dungeon. And now Sirius is trying to hook up with Subaru as well. Not that I can blame her. He does look pretty hot this season. But she's mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is more to I mean, the tweet I think was, wow, I wish Subaru was like more uh, depressed and like suicidal because he looks so hot when he is. And they quote tweeted this one single frame and people are fucking livid. But then again, you can't get mad at those comments because what about the fucking Capella thirst trap comments, right? The girls are simping for Subaru. The guys are simping for Capella. Both sides are just writing down bad shit on Twitter because they realize that the more down bad and insane the tweet is, the more it's probably gonna go viral. But she's mistaking him for Betelgeuse because he's using Betelgeuse's authority. And if I was Subaru in this situation, Run. I would have said, Run. Oh, yeah, I'm Betelgeuse. Come get this unseen dick. Because honestly, I could probably fix her. You know, regular. There's no way we can fix her, bro. Ain't no way, even if we gave her the unseen dick. Probably fix her. You know, Regulus said some wild shit this episode that proves he has no idea what love is. He explains that when it comes to love, a girl's face is the only thing that matters. Yeah. Guy, he's very greedy. Greedy for a lot of wives. I don't know, a lot of freedom in his life. Who knows? But he has a lot of wives. Amelia is the 79th wife. The slot. He's, she's not the 79th wife. He has many more wives than 79. But the 79th slot was specifically saved for Amelia for whatever reason. 79, uh, prime number. On top of that, 7, you know, origin sins. 9, if you add vanity and melancholy, right? Hector and Pandora. Regulus doesn't give a fuck about their personalities. <laughs> the women are just objects. She doesn't, she doesn't even know her name. Let alone, like, her personality... Regulus doesn't even know her name. Thank you, FP, for that gift to sub, man. I appreciate that. So it's just like this guy, and apparently, and lore-wise, he's also a, a virgin. He's, he, he straight up is. What is his goal? Why is he a virgin? Now, I'm about to ask a really fucked up question. Because, like, if he wanted to, I think he could get what he wants. You know what I mean? Like, this dude... He so who could stop him? But there must be a reason. Is maybe he's a super masochist secretly? Is he a secret masochist? And he gets just pegged by all the wives? No, there's no way. Taking his virginity would be a violation of his rights. Now, now we're cooking. Now we are cooking. Regulus never loses. He is a winner. He gets whatever he wants, and he will never lose even his virginity. Now we're cooking. It's the only thing that matters. And I completely disagree. I think it's a bonus when a woman has an attractive face, but the part that really matters... <laughs> what do you think? The, the, it's what's inside, right? A kid that's zooming into Emilia's chest to examine what's inside. <laughs>
is the heart. Sirius would agree. The Kokoro. Agree with that because she says that love is about everyone's hearts being connected as one. And that contrast between hers and Regulus's definition of love is hilarious mm. because Regulus thinks love is all about the woman's face, yet Sirius doesn't even care to show her face. The Interesting parallels here, right? Such little subtleties in the dialogue happening and like the different parallels. It's always happening in Rizuru. If you're not like trying to actively understand it, it just goes right by your head. Sirius doesn't even care to show her face. The interesting thing about the Archbishops is how it's impossible for them to get along with each other because they all have their own extreme radical philosophies. Sirius attacks Regulus this episode just like he attacked Betelgeuse in the past. He's even gone as far as attacking Pandora. Pandora. And Betelgeuse wasn't much different because we've witnessed him killing his own followers as well yeah but at the end of the day they're united by the gospel and here's the weirdest thing why do they listen to the words of the gospel because well why did Betrigus listen to the words of the gospel he wants to make sure that the day of the ordeal is perfectly done he wants to bring back the witch of envy because he simps for satala so hard i have yet to see any single other archbishop make any comments like that and yes we know that betrigus is the most loyal the most devoted to satala and the cult is after all based on the witch of envy right there is this cut content where in Volachia, a metia actually hyped up this other other witch who knows which it, which it was but it was not envy regulus was the one actually sent by the cult to put them down because it's heresy right if you um worship a different witch that's not envy then like you are it's her it's heresy you can it's an abomination and we'll fucking stop you so the cult of the witch is based on the witch of envy yet only betrigus talks about her specifically and maybe not everyone has the same devotion but are we supposed to believe that they're all united for this common goal for the witch yeah because they're looking for the remains of the witch now it could be any witch it didn't specify witch of envy but there's, there's something odd going on. And they are united by the gospel. Even Regulus is like, all right, I listen. You should thank me. I listen, actually listened to the gospel. And Sirius too, before taking out Subaru, she was like, well, but it's time. I got to get going. The gospel's words are absolute. I would love to see and understand exactly what they think about Santala. Do you actually care about the Witch of Envy? Or are you just using her name for just to abuse this nation and just you know, uh, use your powers? I don't know. The Archbishops is how it's serious attacks in the past. He's even gone as far as attacking Pandora, and Betelgeuse wasn't much different because we've witnessed him killing his own followers as well. My All point right. is, the witch cultists are always fighting amongst each other, and that constant internal conflict would have torn apart any other organization. Yet they're united. By Pandora, probably? Yet somehow the witch cult continues to operate as if it's being held together by a mysterious force. I Pandora. Think Pandora is the only explanation for this. Absolutely. It's been over a hundred years since we last saw her, but I think the fact that the archbishops have been able to cooperate without killing each other is proof that Pandora is still keeping them in check and pulling strings from behind the scenes. Also, I just realized by this scene, this funny scene by Regulus, even if you contact him by catching him off guard or he couldn't react, remember, he doesn't take damage. So like, Subaru's attacks, it truly meant fucking nothing, even if it landed. Regulus seemingly does not take damage. His neck gets twisted, it doesn't fucking matter. It gets twisted back into the right form, like what the hell? pulling strings from behind the scenes, meaning that she probably planned this attack on the city as well. Most Until likely. Now, we've never seen more than one or two archbishops at once, yet Pandora sent four of them to yep. attack this city. And finally, we have a motive. The witches remains. That's right. The city of Priestella was built to trap and kill one of the seven witches from 400 years ago. That's right. Now, when they say a witch of remains, right, the only witch that really matters is the witch of envy to these people, right? They don't really think about other witches because the witch of envy is such a taboo topic. So whenever they commonly say the people say witch, it should be witch of envy, but it definitely doesn't mean it can't be anyone else. Ago. And apparently it worked because her bones are still here. According to Echidna, Satella mm. murdered all the other witches, but that's, that's right. not true. Here's a bit of season two cut content. All right, here we go. Daphne starved in a desert. Sekhmet fell into the void. Minerva was- <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Daphne starved in a desert. Sekhmet fall into the void? Dead for you. Daphne starved in a desert. 
The desert is interesting because we know that the seal for Satala is actually in a desert region very east of Lugunica. Sekhmet fell into the void. I think this is supposed to be the great waterfall stuff, right? Into the void. Sekhmet pushed the dragon Volcanica beyond the great waterfall and then Sekhmet just fell into the void. Okay. Minerva was ambushed by elves. Carmilla. Minerva was ambushed by elves? Which is very funny and fucked up. Because it's looking a lot like Minerva may be Amelia's mom. And, you know, Amelia's a half-elf, Minerva's a human, and Minerva's husband probably is the elf. Probably. Carmilla burned in a fire. Carmilla just got crucified? And Typhon drowned in a flood. Ah, uh, uh, there it is. It's Typhon. I mean, if you're drowning by flood and, you know, Pristilla, it's, it's a trap. You raise the water to drown. It's looking like Typhon is the witch remains that they're trying to recover. Why? I don't know. I have no clue what happens when you collect the remains of a witch. Because right now, and another crazy thing is, the soul of Typhon and the other witches, they're with Omega. Omega, who is Echidna in Ryuzu's body. And they're all fucking around somewhere else. Hmm. Hmm. When you get the remains of Typhon, it's not necessarily to resurrect Typhon, I doubt. Why would Pandora want the remains? Is Pandora herself going to insert her soul into Typhon? Is that even necessary? I don't even know. What is the state of Pandora right now? Who fucking knows? With the remains, maybe there's some additional shit mechanics regarding the Witch of Envy that I have no clue about. Maybe it just grants them more powers. Who knows? Witch factor? That's another interesting thing to think about. Another really interesting thing to think about is how pride is missing. But it's not... The Archbishop of Pride did exist before. It was never a vacant spot forever, right? I'm pretty sure during the last two months of your ReZero Marathon and analyzing cut content, I vaguely remember the Archbishop of Pride actually did exist in the past, but now it's empty. So it's not as if, like, the witch factor is a tie to the corpse, right? The remains. I'm sure it's out there in a box, maybe someone else has it, they just haven't shown up. But that is pretty interesting how Tifon is the Witch of Pride and that got drowned out and the remains are here and the Archbishop of Pride is right now conveniently empty. Yeah. It sounds like Ty- hmm? What was it? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go back, go back, go back. Typhone drowned in a flood. Oh, okay, it says that. Arc 4, page 319. We're just getting credible sources. Typhon, Typhon. It sounds like Typhon got got, and now the witch cult wants her bones, so I guess the question is, what the fuck is Pandora planning to do with Typhon's bones? I don't know. Maybe you grind it up and you drink it. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Maybe if you consume the bones, if the remains are specific bones, and like, it's very interesting the specific word that Echidna is using, and he says bones, so it must be fucking bones, but uh... What are they gonna do with the bones? Maybe there's like a ceremony. Maybe it's like a catalyst. Maybe the bones somehow will help in <laughs> opening up the seal that is an earlier forest. Maybe the bone is a key? Well, because I'm trying to think backwards. Like, what does Panthera want? She wants to fucking open that seal, right? In Elder 4. That was like pretty much season 2 fucking trial. I don't know. <laughs> Skuna fingers. Ah, maybe. <laughs> maybe we should think about the bones of Skuna fingers and we should collect them all and, and then what? Pandora gets... Uh, Tifone gets... I don't fucking know. We know what the Tifone's soul is with Omega right now. I, I don't know. As for the cut content in this episode, yeah. Subaru making out with Felix what? was a moment I really looked forward to... Cap! No, you're lying! Tapping to, especially when he uses the unseen hand, but hopefully they're just saving that for next week because no! this episode only adapted half of two... You're shows, fucking trolling! i waiting to finish them in episode four. I was really impressed by the voice acting this episode, especially from Sirius. And yeah. Of course, when Aoyuki called me a worthless meat sack, it obviously awakened something deep inside me. People I love I being really shit on Ryan, huh? feel that much, but he was basically the star of this episode, and I think he's really cute with Mimi. His plot line is amazing. Yes, Mimi me and Garfield are so cute and that's why I'm so worried for Mimi. Amazing and he could really be the protagonist of a shonen anime. Exactly! He's a battle shonen main character struggling with his internal strife, with his internal fucking like beast that's inside and that's Elsa right now. Bro, let fucking Elsa take over. <laughs> if, 
<laughs> Dude, imagine like you know how Ichigo gets like um, possessed by the inner hollow and defeats Byakuya, quote unquote. Right? You know how Naruto gets consumed by the Nine Tails, like the QB, and goes off in the Zabuza arc, right? Dude, let Garfield get consumed by Elsa. <laughs> be so down anime if he wanted to again this episode felt like it was only five minutes long and it was another 10 out of 10, 10. i yes, wish sir. i could have made this video longer for you guys but i really need to go kneel down grovel and shit myself i know i'm a big famous youtuber with almost 300 300 000. but i still read all the comments so if you guys had any questions about the episode i do not thank you for the review analysis the farm as usual and congratulations on the 300 billion subscribers well deserved but hey here's the link please go check out a kidnets channel go like his videos if you'd like and i'll see you guys on the next one